Now, the Diana Legacy Awards really brought into stark relief the difference between royalty and celebrity. Or if I'm being angry and poopy, I'd say royalty and the grifters. Hi, and thanks for joining me. I'm just popping in for a quick chat because I wanted to share something that actually made me feel a bit better today. And I thought, well, maybe it might make you feel a little bit better. So I thought I'd share it. It was in the Sunday Times and it was written by their royal editor, an exclusive piece, Roya Nicker. And this is the direct quote that actually made me feel really good. So I thought I'd share it with you. So here it is. William and Kate have also been buoyed by public support and the sense that the public sentiment is not the same as on TikTok or on X. I'm just adding that bit. On Tuesday, the Buckingham Palace switchboard rang off the hook with messages of support for them. Isn't that fantastic? And that was actually passed on to them by their new communications guy, who is evidently doing a really great job and giving them great advice. And I'll explain that comment in a little bit. Um, and also thank you to all the community on a community post. Now, community posts, if you get a few thousand likes on a community post, you're doing really, really well. They're not like videos. They're not seen by sort of the general public. They're just seen by subscribers. 9.6 thousand likes and loves and also thousands and thousands of comments. So I've actually tagged on X, the Prince and Princess of Wales official account. I've also tagged uh, Kensington Palace account. I've also tagged them on Insta and I'm sure that it will be passed on. That is a huge response and I'm just so proud of our community and it is going to make a difference. It does make a difference. Showing your support, being positive is probably more impactful than all the people out there that are trying to tear them down. Now the reason why I said that they seem to be getting good advice is I've come to the conclusion that the Prince and Princess of Wales and King Charles and Queen Camilla are playing the long game. And what do I mean by the long game? Well, lifelong service, the lifelong service game. And when you think about it from that perspective, when you think about lifelong service, you realise that all the idiots that have been <laughs> cheating their mouth off over the last week, either by the written word or, you know, on TV, you know, stridently demanding things of Catherine Princess of Wales, oh, groan. Anyway, you see that they really don't matter. They're just a brief sort of blip in time, really, aren't they? Because the Prince and Princess of Wales will be going on and on and on and eventually becoming king and queen. And hopefully we've got a lot longer with King Charles and Queen Camilla as well. So this lifelong service, the service doesn't finish until they're passed away. That's when their duty ends. Same as the queen. So when you think about it in those terms, how many of these pundits are even going to be alive? when the Prince and Princess of Wales are well into their reign as King and Queen. How most of them, if they're still alive, most of them will be retired, if not sacked, and become completely irrelevant. So really, who cares what they say? I mean, I know that I'll be completely irrelevant. <laughs> We all will become probably completely irrelevant unless we manage to leave some sort of good, some sort of legacy, some sort of benefit to other people. And I think most of us would, you know, try to attempt to do that in some way in our lifetime. But the point is that those that try to drag others down and, you know, basically just pick and bully people, they're not going to be remembered. And what they said in print this week or what they, you know, shot their mouths off saying on TV this week, no one's going to remember in 20 years. And then that got me thinking. <laughs> I've had a lot of thoughts over the last 48 hours, but I've been trying to sort of work all this out. And there's something I've noticed. You know how it was loudly said that there's no way that Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, was in any way involved in all this and there's no way that she could be blamed for it and this was all on Catherine, the Princess of Wales. Well, that is actually true because the Princess of Wales chose to publish that beautiful shot for Mother's Day and she chose to try to tweak it in Photoshop, which all of us do and what's the big deal? So, yes, but... That's not what we're accusing Meghan Markle of being involved in. 
And actually, we're not even accusing her of being involved after the fact. But it's interesting if we just have a little bit of a think about this. Now, the usual PR Puff glossy magazines that do all the PR Puff for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, you know, if Megan sneezes in Melodrama Cito, it's news the next day in all these sort of glossy PR magazines. I'm not going to name them because I could get myself into trouble, but you know who they are. You know, you know what the stable of glossies is. You know the magazines. Well, I noticed a bit of a difference. Because usually when they report anything on Catherine, Princess of Wales, whether it's positive or negative, they always, in the next sentence or the next paragraph, they mention Megan. Not a word. Not a mention of Megan. There wasn't even a whisper about Megan in all these articles. But one thing all these articles had in common were the fact that they were trying to drag down Catherine Princess of Wales and they went to extraordinary lengths to do so. But I noticed a little bit of a change. Usually they all share the same story. You can tell that they've been given a story. I always, I, I call it a spill. <laughs> They've got a spill from the Sussexes for Mello Dravacito. And usually they all sort of report pretty much the same story, but with slight variances on the theme. This time, all the stories were very, very different. It was interesting. And a lot of them went to extraordinary lengths to even sort of drag up things, hoping to cause a rift between King Charles, Queen Camilla and the Prince and Princess of Wales, as if, but that's what they were trying to do because they were dragging up the Chelsea Flower Show, you know, way back when Catherine attended. Remember she attended the same day as the King? They dragged that up and they more or less implied that King Charles had never gotten over having his thunder stolen on that day. And it, the implication of the article was that, you know, he, he still resented Catherine for that. So it was all this sort of trying to whip up a reaction, trying to whip up division. And then I thought, well, that's what flying monkeys do, isn't it? They divide and isolate. So when do we all of a sudden start hearing from Megan again? Well, with the launch of American Riviera Orchard. Now, let me try and say that fast. American Riviera Orchard Gee, it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It's such a snappy brand. I can see that lasting at least two months. But that's when we heard from Megan again. And it's interesting, isn't it? As you know, rolled out during Diana Legacy Awards. Now, before we get all negative, let's see the wonder of the Diana Legacy Awards and also what Prince William said. In his speech, William paid tribute to Diana as a mother who taught me that everyone has the potential to give something back, that everyone in need deserves a supporting hand in life. That legacy is something that both Catherine and I have sought to focus on through our work. Now, I think that is wonderful that William is highlighting the very best of his mother. When his mother was working, there was no one like her. Whenever she spoke to someone, she made that person feel like they were the most important person in the room. And everyone that ever met Diana says the same thing. So regardless of how she may have conducted herself in her private life or whether you approve of her or not, the very best of her... I think has been passed down in Prince William. And by extension, I think Catherine is aiming for that same a connection with people and making people feel special and valued. And I think that really is a magical part of this couple. Now, the Diana Legacy Awards really brought into stark relief the difference between royalty and celebrity. Or if I'm being angry and poopy, I'd say royalty and the grifters. And that was because William's focus was on the awards. William's focus was what the awards were for and how it paid tribute to the legacy of his mother. And he told us what that was. He made it very clear. Then his attention was on the recipients, highlighting the recipients, making sure he had a photograph taken with every single recipient, personally and privately talking to each recipient. Then he didn't use that to trade off that for publicity for himself. 
Whereas Harry, with his two-hour late drop-in on Zoom because he's too busy having fun in the snow, but that's just hearsay in my personal opinion, and I may be wrong, uh, he dropped in and, yeah, he did the, you know, Harry banter, Harry the lad, Harry friendly. He's very good at that friendly stuff, isn't he? Very, very good at that. So all the recipients enjoyed it and they loved it and they loved the attention from Harry. So we can't take that away from them. But the interesting thing is that every single article that mentioned the Diana Legacy Awards mentioned Megan's launch. Every single one mentioned it. And in particular, after they mentioned Harry's Zoom, they mentioned Megan's launch. And even Williams' bit of the evening, when they were actually reviewing the Diana Legacy Awards, which only happens every two years, Megan's launch, Megan's business. Now, that's the difference between royalty and grifters. William put the focus on the recipients, their work, and the worthiness of their award, and also what the award was for. Harry dropped in, and it was all about, look how friendly I am, look how great I am. Do you like me? Do you really, really like me? And then the reporting of it featured his wife's new business. Now, there's only one couple that are trading off their mother's legacy, the Sussexes, because they used Diana's Legacy Awards to launch Megan's business and to get publicity for that business. Because if they hadn't have released it right on the Diana Legacy Award time, do you think it would have got the coverage that it got? No way. It did occur to me too, just as an ending thought, that um, Queen Elizabeth II, our late majesty, how many strident, loud journos do you think she saw off in her time? And TV royal pundits, how many, how many she saw that would just come and go? She outlived them all. Really, she did. And so by the end of her reign, by the end of her 70 years of selfless service, does anyone even remember the critical voices, you know, throughout her reign? Maybe 20 years before she died, someone was critical in a newspaper article or TV pundits were calling for her to do this or do that or act this way or say this or go here or appear or... Any of that, does anyone even remember their demands? Does anyone even care? When the Queen passed away and everyone was remembering her fondly and with gratitude and talking about her legacy and her duty, did anyone bring up the carping journos that had a go at her throughout her reign? No one. Didn't even get a mention. So if I'm going to quote Humphrey Bogart, they don't matter a hill of beans. And they don't. They don't. They're just blips. They're nothing. They're just little mosquitoes to swat away. That's how irrelevant they are. Now, the good news is Prince William is getting good support. The appointment of Ian Patrick, William's new private secretary, who's a former diplomat, um, and he was appointed an MBE for international peacekeeping. And this is the verdict. He's a hit with the household. He's fabulous. Thank God he arrived at the perfect moment, a royal insider said. He's fantastic, really calm, super smart. He's perfect for William, and William is really pleased he's there. This is a quote from the Sunday Times article by Roy Anika. He's been funny, calm, and very clear about not reacting to anything. So I think we can feel really optimistic and happy because I think there's been a really stoic and steadfast response to all of this. It did get me down initially, but now I just feel confident and I really feel that it'll just be, it'll all blow over, it'll all be a big nothing. And can you imagine how wonderful it's going to be whenever Catherine is ready to come back and that's whenever she is ready at her own pace, I think that it's going to be just, it's going to create so much excitement and I think it's going to be wonderful. 
think it's going to be really, really wonderful. So we have a lot to look forward to and um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night because I've got episode two of Sarah My Story. Now, just a quick note for those of you that think I'm trying to do a PR spin on Sarah, Duchess of York, far from it. I'm... <laughs> reading this book because it's got some hilarious light-hearted bits in it that I intend to share. It has some poignant bits as well. There's a bit of light and shade, but I am not doing a PR campaign for Sarah, Duchess of York. I'm just reviewing her book and it does give us great background and insight into the time that actually followed The Housekeeper's Diary. So I will see you then. Bye.